I got a hundred other things to worry about before I care about what kind of like pants people wear. My job as a leader isn't to, isn't to sort of like tell people what to do. My job as a leader is to create an environment where people can have that creativity and autonomy and I need to give them um, sort of ownership of things to do that. 大家好,我是李宏毅,我是政府开源科技部的主管,你有听过Parking.SG还是Go.gov.SG还是Vaccine.gov.SG吗?这是我的团队开发的。OGP, or Open Government Products, is essentially a team designed to be a private, uh, a modern tech company that works on public sector problems. If you're looking at Parking SG, we didn't receive any requests from anyone to build that. We, we were looking, we had a sort of portfolio of like, you know, brainstorming sessions of like, what are the different problems in Singapore we can try to solve. And we built a prototype and then we pitched that prototype to URA and, uh, you know, and LTA and HDB um, to, to look at. The most, the, the thing that's I guess most reflective of this is uh, how we get our ideas, which is our annual hackathon. So every year for the month of January, basically the team pauses all non-critical works and we do a hackathon for the whole month. And what we mean by this is that for the first uh, week, we go around visiting different government agencies. And then for the next three weeks, we come back and then we build products and solutions that are at the end of three weeks, which are then presented to sort of, you know, senior government leadership at the end of three weeks. So go.gov.sg, so if you see the go.gov links, that was a hackathon project. The Redeem SG, so the, the CDC vouchers that were distributed to, to all the households, um, that came out of a hackathon project a couple of years ago. If you look at our team's projects now, about 70% of the projects um, come, came from a hackathon. I used to be quite heavily involved in the day-to-day -day of like, actually like writing code and like doing the UX design and things like that. So when you're about seven or eight people, a lot of the initial products are things that I directly intervene in myself. Um, but nowadays, I don't really touch it much. Technology is about creativity and autonomy. For most product teams, almost all of the engineering and design and product decisions lie entirely with the team. Because I believe if I hire a good designer, I hire a good designer to do good design for me, not for me to tell them what good design is. Because I'm not going to be as good design as them. It's much more about trying to create an environment so that good people can come in and they can work you know, with fewer constraints and help clear roadblocks for them when they need to get things done. Like, for example, with like dress code, like I got a hundred other things to worry about before I care about what kind of like pants people wear. Like, I don't know who spends all the time thinking about this. Um, some of my team, uh, some of them, they work remotely. Some of them, actually, they're like, oh, actually, you know, my, my um, you know, their, their, their partner is in a different country. Actually, they asked if they could work remotely for a few, for, for a few months. I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, as long as you meet our meeting times, if you don't make it my problem, I don't, I don't care. When I first went to college, I was an econ student and, and I studied that first, but, uh, and I started doing some computer science classes as well. But then I think what changed was that uh, I was doing some econ research over the summer. You know, you do, you write a paper and you spend all the time writing this stuff. You come up with a paper and like, maybe your, your advisor and like your parents read it at most. <laughs> um, but then I, I did an internship uh, when I was a product manager, as a product manager, and not even an engineer, as a product manager. Um, and then I realized that like, the things that I was doing, they weren't, these weren't just for fun. These weren't just like an intern assignment to go there. Like I was making, I was helping build a product that like would be used just all over the world. And like that was what made me like, I was like, actually this, this is important. Like the way, the only thing that's going to have imp like mass impact to change how the world works is technology. And which is why I decided to, you know, which is why I decided to start studying tech a bit more and started working. You know, and I still believe that, I still believe very much that like, the only way we can do much better than we are now is by technology. There is no dramatic improvement to our quality of life outside of, uh, outside of using computers. The problem that I'm trying to solve fundamentally is I'm trying to get the best people to work on the most important problems. Well, the main resource constraint in the world is what good people do. And when I say good, I don't just mean smart. I mean like, like yes, intelligence is a part of it, but also so is your like, you know, your your communication, your ability to work with other people, your initiative, your 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 just like values and whether or not you care about the right things. And I think we live in a world right now where all the best people don't work on very important things. Let's say Netflix like streamed movies in like, you know, 720p instead of like 4K resolution. Is that really a big deal? No, it's Fine. but yet we have like armies of PhDs and really, really brilliant people like optimizing the hell out of their networks to get to, uh, to, get, to, this, get to this stage. Meanwhile, when it comes to like healthcare, 
know, we're still doing a lot of things manually. You ask anyone in the hospitals, right? There's still a ton of paperwork. There's still a ton of like things that we need to automate. There's still a ton of things that we're doing by hand and in the education sector as well. Like I'm sure anyone who works in the education will tell you like so much stuff is done manually that really doesn't need to be done. Um, and I, I think that's a shame. Finite resource in the world is not energy or oil or minerals or diamonds or anything, but it is good people. And we have all of our best people solving sort of shopping and entertainment, but not government. And we're in trouble. I think there are a lot of ways to solve problems outside of being in charge. I think actually you just figure out what you care about and then you work on it. And yeah, you're right. I mean, maybe your career won't move as fast as you went in other cases, or maybe you will do like less impact. Uh, you, like may maybe in the long run, you'll do the same thing. I don't know. But it's not about being the person that makes a difference. It's about the state of the world as a result of your actions, which is a slightly different point. Hopefully that makes sense. It's like, I mean, I, I understand because I used to be there. I used to have this sort of very sort of egocentric anxiety about my impact on the world. Um, you know, he's just out of school and, you know, you know am, I, am, I, am I achieving my potential? Am I, am I like, you know, having impact? Am I doing the thing? I see my friends doing startups and making companies. Am I do and, and I get that. But at, at this point, I've sort of realized that like people of all levels of success are just as miserable as you. It's not true that people who are like, like the CEOs or the perm sex are living like super, super happy lives. In fact, you talk to the perm sex, they, like, they're super stressed out. And so there's no like personal benefit to achieving like that level. Like, you, don't get me wrong. If you have trouble paying your rent and feeding your family and sending your kids to school, yeah, then absolutely it is correct for you to try and achieve more professional success. Absolutely. But beyond the point, actually, once you, once you realize that you can live a pretty decent life, um, it really doesn't matter. I mean, maybe, um, not so much anymore. I mean, you're growing up, you always have this sort of expectation on you a little bit, but really, once I realized that there were a dozen other things I could be doing, and then you have a choice to be here, and then you're making a choice to be here, you just wanna make sure things go well, that's all. Either way, you're gonna do your best. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Your professional success makes no difference. I mean, whether or not I, perform or not is sort of almost not the point. Uh, honestly, my free time is not that interesting. I, I like doing mechanical things. So I have a, like a workshop. Um, I'll like sand and grind and polish things and like I do a lot of mechanical things. I've been, uh, most recently I've been restoring an old motorcycle that I bought uh, a few months ago. That was quite fun. Um, I took it down to its bare parts and put it back together. Um, I play a lot of video games. Um, I eat. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I go around finding places to eat. But I, I always wanted to be a video game developer since I grew up. You know, I mean, I'm sure every every boy who like played video games growing up wanted to be a video game developer. Uh, I'm no different. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe one day. <laughs> My dream retirement job is to have like a workshop somewhere where I just like sit outside and like like sand and polish metal all day long, and then like maybe as a side thing, I will like have a have a cafe where I make fried rice and burgers. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like I, I mean, I don't like, I mean, I know, I, I'm not very, I don't know how to make ice cream. I just eat a lot of it. But I, the one, one of the two things I do know how to cook is fried rice and burgers. Uh, so maybe that, um, that's what I would do.